What is the strangest crossover in LEGO history? Is it the Batman Gandalf Wildstyle team up in LEGO Dimensions? Is it the time the LEGO Maniac met Scooby Doo and battled the insectoids? Or could it be something even more obscure? That's right, it's time to talk about LEGO and elves. No, no, not those elves. These elves. The Keebler cookie ones. 1999 was an enormously important year for LEGO, and not just because of LEGO Star Wars. This year also saw the release of the Rock Raiders theme in video game, the LEGO Creator video game, and the opening of Legoland California, the third Legoland theme park and the first in the US. And to top it all off, there were the usual classic LEGO themes like Adventurers and Spaceport. Those themes became the basis for one of the strangest, but also most lore-focused promotions of the decade. And yes, I did say one of, since it's not even the only cookie-related lore-heavy LEGO promotion during this time, but that's a subject for another video. In the late 90s, the LEGO group did a lot of contests and promotions with food brands, including Oscar Mayer, Kraft, McDonald's, Nestle, and Kellogg's. Partnering with Keebler, makers of EL Fudge, Chips Deluxe, and Pizzerias, to name three of my personal favorites, the LEGO group teamed up Keebler's famous cartoon mascot, Ernie Keebler, with the LEGO Maniac, who had transformed himself into a cartoon mascot earlier in the 90s. The story unfolded across three different game pieces, which took the form of tiny short comics included in specially marked packages of Keebler products, like Droxies, Cookie Sticks, and Snackingrams, none of which are still available from Keebler, under those names at least, as well as Fudge Shop Cookies, Grams Crackers, Chips Deluxe Cookies, Club Crackers, and Cheez-Its Heads and Tails. I seem to have repressed my memory of the commercials for that last one, and with good reason. The Finders Keebler's contest was notable for the extended crossover between the LEGO characters and another brand's marketing mascots in story form, which only happened a handful of times in the 90s. As explained in this ad from the March 1999 issue of the LEGO Club Mania magazine, it all starts with a phone call where the LEGO maniac invites Ernie and the other Keebler characters for some adventures. I do like the idea that the LEGO maniac can just call up other random non-LEGO characters for shenanigans. From here, the story gets a little harder to follow. Somehow, the Keebler Hollow Tree has gone missing, but while this is at the center of the three exciting quests and the game pieces, it is not well explained. This is kind of important, as according to Keebler lore, the Keebler Hollow Tree is the factory that the elves used to produce all of their cookies and snacks through various magical means. They also live there, and as a kid, this is one of my dream houses. In fact, while researching this video, I found out that if you visit the Keebler website today, you're greeted with this animation welcoming you into the tree. Yes, please. Apparently, having your workplace and home vanish leaves you with a lot of free time, so in the first quest, the Keebler Legoland Finders Keebler's Adventure, rather than trying to actively find the tree, Ernie Keebler is just hanging out with the Lego Maniac and the Dude at Legoland California. Now, Ernest J. Keebler is the head elf of the Keebler factory, but this dude appears to be a one-off character created to appeal to the kids in 1999. While a lot of the Keebler characters are well documented, I can only find him in two commercials. He looks like he could be the Maniac's cousin, honestly. He's got cool shades, cool earrings, and a monkey that lives in his pocket. You know, everything the kids want. Anyway, all the fun is making the gang hungry, so they do what anyone would do in a theme park in this situation. Pick food up off the ground and eat it. Apparently, someone has left a trail of giant Keebler cookies all through the park, which they follow to the Fun Town Pyramids. Now, because 25 years later I still haven't been to Legoland, California, I'm not sure this resembles any part of the actual park, but I'm fairly sure that the Sphinxes there wouldn't have Ernie Keebler's face on them. This is another oddity that makes no sense at all, even in the context of the contest story. I'm not sure if this was some kind of contractually required percentage of Keebler to Lego elements in these comics, but it's pretty bizarre. The hollow tree clues continue inside the pyramids, where the trio follows a helpful mummy to the final puzzle. Let's talk about the decoders that came with the game pieces to help you find the hidden tree and, hopefully, the prizes. Each game piece package came with a cardboard elfin decoder with a red lens, which you would use to filter out the red Keebler text box to reveal whether or not you had won a prize. There were two on each game piece, giving you two chances to win. The one grand prize was a trip for four to Legoland, California. That's one trip to Legoland hidden somewhere in hundreds of thousands of packages in various cookies and crackers all across the United States of America. Any intelligent adult is going to realize that even the Willy Wonka contest had better odds than this, but like all kids, I gave the possibility of winning some serious consideration. Now, if your family was larger than four people, did you ever worry about what would happen if you were the one grand prize winner in the entire country and you had to decide who to leave behind? It'd be the youngest, right? But what if they were the one who opened the cookies? Is that right? Is that fair? Or is that just the way the cookie 
crumbles. Anyway, the first prize was a Lego Maniac pack, which consisted of three relatively small sets, 4940 Granite Grinder, 6454 Countdown Quarter, and 5936 Spider Secret. 1,000 of these were to be given away, 2,000 second place prizes consisted of the LEGO Creator CD-ROM, and 30,000 third place prizes were free Keebler products with an average value of $3.29. As LEGO prizes go, this was fairly small potatoes. Each package also included one of six LEGO Traders cards to collect. More on these in a minute. The next quest, titled The Keebler Fudgetari... The Keebler Fudgetarium... The Keebler Fudgetarian... The Keebler Fudge Terrarian Adventure sees Ernie and the Lego Maniac back in the Keebler world, where Ernie takes the Maniac on a tour to the Fudget... To the Chocolate Spring. It's a spring that springs fudge. Probably a hot fudge spring. Anyway, they head back to the Keebler Hollow Tree, which I guess they found now? But before they can leave the caverns, the exit is blocked by Rocky the Rock Monster, the antagonist of the Rock Raiders theme. The Maniac decides that the only way out is to drill their way out with a 4970 Chrome Crusher, and he gets to work building one. Rock Raiders engineer Sparks appears out of nowhere to help, and soon they're drilling an alternate route back to the Keebler Hollow Tree if they can find it. Wait, if they can find it? So the tree is still missing? Did they know that when they went on the tour? If they don't buckle down and actually find this factory tree, Keebler's is going to lose out its cookie market share to, I don't know, the Girl Scouts or somebody. Wait a second. All right, this crisis is about to get completely out of control. Let's see if they can finally solve the mystery of the missing tree in the final quest. In the last chapter of this cookie caper, the Keebler Jungle Re Tree Val Adventure, Ernie the Maniac have decided to bring in a real expert, Johnny Thunder. Off screen, they've even figured out who stole the Keebler tree in the first place, Senor Palomar, Johnny Thunder's South American nemesis. Johnny suggests they can cover more ground if the Maniac builds them the Scorpion Tracker. Okay, well that's the 5936 Spider Secret card, not the 5918 Scorpion Tracker, but never mind. Now all they have to do is find a tree in the middle of a jungle. Well, good luck with that one. The final element included in each game piece was one of the LEGO Traders cards, which features six LEGO characters from the themes involved in the contest. Johnny Thunder, Senor Palomar, Rocky the Rock Monster, Sparks, Buzz Bailey, and Halley Comet. These may be some of the rarest pieces of LEGO lore ephemera with unique content. While the character biographies on the back are taken almost word for word from issues of the LEGO Mania Club magazine, they also include a set of likes, dislikes, and a quote from each character. While these had been standard in Mania Magazine in previous years, by 1999 these had been mostly phased out. It seems to have been extraordinarily difficult to get a complete set of these cards. We bought probably over a dozen packages of cookies back in the day, which only yielded two unique cards, the Rock Monster and Buzz Bailey. As it happens, there are a few more intriguing details buried in the traders' cards and game pieces. When I shared these with some eagle-eyed Rock Raiders fans, they pointed out some interesting behind-the-scenes details that I had missed. Barrack Lava pointed out that the Rock Raiders logo used here is actually the prototype logo, not the final version. Apparently, this is the first clear version that's been uncovered of this iteration of the logo. Sadie dug really deep into the contest fine print and noticed that the first place LEGO Maniac prize packs included playsets for Adventures, Spaceport, and Underground. According to internal universe description documents, Underground seems to have been intended to be the umbrella theme and environment name, with Rock Raiders being a sub-theme specifically referring to miners and their vehicles, similar to Aquazone and Aquanauts. Ultimately, the Rock Raiders were the only underground wave, and the larger theme name doesn't appear to have been used much outside of internal documents and this contest. This also shows up in the Rock Monster's biography, where all references to Underground are capitalized, consistent with its designation as the theme's name and setting. In the version used for Mania Magazine, Underground appears only in lowercase, neatly removing references to the original theme name. The final element of the promotion was the LEGO Ernie model, which was heavily featured on advertisements and the game pieces themselves. Each game piece included a secret password, which you could use to access building instructions for the Ernie model on Keepler.com. I haven't been able to find the instructions, but Brickshelf user Maskatron did post these based on the original models, and the Wayback Machine yielded this parts list. YouTuber MRN Bricks built this model back in 2017 and was kind enough to let me use his footage. Since this was before Bricklink and Pick a Brick, actually building this guy with the correct colors would have been surprisingly difficult in 1999. While the website recommended getting in touch with Shop at Home for extra bricks, it does acknowledge that brown bricks may be hard to find and suggests using black bricks instead. 
At the time, both brown and green bricks were actually much harder to come by in large quantities than they are today, so this was kind of a weird project to feature so heavily in the promotion. Of course, Keebler and the LEGO Group were not limited by the bricks available to customers, and many pre-built Ernies were made as display items for a number of retailers. These statues have been the most enduring remnants of this partnership and have become display pieces for several bemused collectors. Do you remember this contest? Do you still have any of those rare LEGO traders? Better yet, did you ever win a contest like this and have a cool story to tell? Is this actually the strangest LEGO story crossover? Let me know in the comments, please like and subscribe, and until then, grab a package of crackers or cookies for old time's sake, and if you need me, I'll be in the Keebler Hollow Tree.